Hey guys, welcome back to Medical Coding with Blue. Today is more study tips for medical coding students with an emphasis on anatomy. If you are brand new to my channel, welcome. I am Blue, I'm a medical coder. Last week I put out a video talking about my favorite mnemonic devices uh, and study tips for medical coding students. Understanding anatomy and knowing where everything is in the body is going to help you before you start getting into reading medical documentation. Reading medical documentation is like understanding a different language, okay? It is really very complex sometimes. And the more you know and understand the body and the disease process and your medical terminology, the easier and the faster it's gonna be for you to get through um, all of the documentation. Now, mnemonic devices are very helpful. If you don't know what a, a mnemonic device is, a mnemonic device is like a cute little catchphrase that you can use to help you to jog your memory when it comes to groups of words you need to remember. So usually it is the first letter of each word in this mnemonic device or this little catchphrase that is associated with a word that you need to remember from the group of words that you have to remember. Uh, so I'm gonna go ahead and start reading some of my favorites and I will leave some helpful links in the description box below for you guys to check out. Uh, so some more study material and resources for you guys. So let's begin. All right, so the first one is the anterior flexor muscles of the forearm. So there's quite a few <laughs> and the mnemonic device goes, cats run circles under dogs stomachs so we're going to take the first letter of each of these each word in this phrase and it's going to be associated with a word in this group of words which is the muscles of the anterior uh, flexor muscles of the forearm and it's going to go like this so cats run circles under dog stomachs right uh carpi radialis carpi ulnaralis digitorum superficialis C R C U D S. Cats run circles under dog stomachs. Carpi radialis, carpi ulnaralis, digitorum superficialis. <laughs> so anytime you're looking at the documentation and they're talking about these muscles in the forearm, you're going to know if they talk about the superficialis that that is part of the anterior flexor muscles of the forearm. <laughs> You gotta know where these things are. All right, so um, the next one is the subclavian artery. So there are branches of the subclavian artery. The mnemonic device is vitamin, the V-I-T is what we're using, okay? But we're gonna go ahead and talk about vitamin. Vitamin C and D, okay? So we're gonna be using V-I-T-C-D, right? Um, so it is. it stands for the vertebral artery, the internal thoracic artery, the thyroid cervical trunk, the costo cervical artery, the dorsal scapular artery. So V I T C D. Okay, so vitamin C and D, verte vertebral artery, <laughs> internal thoracic artery, uh, thyroid cervical trunk. Costo cervical artery and dorsal scapular artery. So it's really important, especially if you're doing lots of surgeries, to really understand <laughs> where these, uh, where all of this is. So the next one is the bowel components. This one is a fun one. Okay, so part of the bowel components, right? You have the Dow Jones Industrial Average Closing Stock Report. D-J-I-A-C-S-R. Now, what could this stand for? <laughs> Are you ready? From proximal to distal, okay? So closest to, to, the, to the lowest, right? Um, the duodenum, the jejunum, the ileum, the appendix, the colon, the sigmoid, and the rectum, okay? So that makes up the Dow Jones Industrial Average Closing Stock Report. And those are all your bowel components. <laughs> so pretty good, huh? Right, that's a good way to remember it, okay? The Dow Jones uh, Industrial Average Closing Stock Report. I like that one. <laughs> all right, so the uh, muscles in the posterior leg compartment or 
So we're talking about Tom fought pirates, then fled. Okay. So we have the tibialis posterior, the flexor digitorum longus, the posterior tibial artery, the tibial nerve, and the flexor hallucis longus. So all of these make up the uh, posterior leg compartment. Everything, all of this, right? Not just muscles, but um, we have arteries and nerves in there too. So that is something to know. Tom fought pirates, then fled. Now think about, think about it, right? A pirate usually has a peg leg. So think about that, right? Posterior, the posterior leg compartment is made up of the tibialis uh, posterior, the flexor digitorum longus, the posterior tibial artery, the tibial nerve, and the flexor hallucis longus. So you know, anytime you see flexor hallucis longus, you'll know where that is. It's in the posterior leg compartment. <laughs> You guys are going to get really sharp. The more you do these, the more fun it gets, okay? <laughs> now you have the anterior leg compartment. Now what makes up the anterior leg compartment? Those horses are never doing Pilates. Well, how many times have you seen a, a horse do Pilates, right? <laughs> so you have the tibialis anterior, the extensor hallucis longus, the arterial or the anterior tibial artery, the deep fibular nerve, uh, the extensor digitorum longus, and the perineus tertius. I know I probably said that one wrong, <laughs> but if you guys are looking it up, you'll know. So that makes up the anterior leg compartment. <laughs> Next one is the bones in the phalanges, right? So you think, darn my pinky, right? So you have the um, distal phalanx, the middle phalanx, and you have the proximal phalanx, right? So uh, distal, middle, proximal, because this is closest to the body. Distal is furthest away, okay? So that's how you're gonna be able to associate those. So you think, darn my pinky, when you're thinking of the bones here, okay? Distal, middle, proximal. <laughs> um, Next one is the bones of the hand, right? So the bones of the hand, please make cookies. Now, if somebody says, please make cookies, I'm, all bo I'm on board because I love cookies. <laughs> so we have the phalanges, the metacarpal bones, right? The phalanges, the metacarpal bones, and then the carpal bones, okay? So um, please make cookies, all right? <laughs> you gotta use your hands to make cookies. So that's how you can remember that too. And the next one is the skull sutures, okay? So you have, you have skull sutures, right, on your skull. And the mnemonic device goes, can seagulls lift snacks? Well, of course they can lift snacks. <laughs> uh, but it goes the coronal um, suture, the sagittal suture, the lam lambdoid suture, and the squamous suture. Those are all the sutures of the skull, okay? Can seagulls lift snacks? Okay. <laughs> and of course, my favorite one from last week was the cranial bones, which was fit people occasionally eat table salt. The frontal, parietal, occipital, ethmoid, temporal, and sepnoid bones. <laughs> All make up the cranial bones. All right. And then we have... I did a little bit of uh, pathophysiology, right? So uh, the causes of acute pancreatitis. Now, this came from a nursing website, I think. Um, I, I believe it was a nursing website. I'm going to leave the website, the direct website. It was acponline.org um, is where I got this from, which was really awesome. And I like it because it's, it gives a list of all the causes of acute pancreatitis. Now, of course, we don't have to know um, what causes uh, certain conditions. However, it does help us when we're looking at the documentation to sort of know, like, is this part of, of something else? Or should we be looking and making sure that we're capturing um, 
uh, this as a as a uh, combination code or is it uh, something that is by itself obviously we're never going to assume anything is is what it is because we're going based on documentation <laughs> never on assumption um, but it does help to sort of understand like uh, what happens like how, how does this happen how does an acute uh, ca causes of acute pancreatitis so the mnemonic device goes I get smashed right so when you think about that all the letters <laughs> make up this little phrase I get smashed are all potential causes of acute pancreatitis. Are you ready? <laughs> so we have infections can cause pancreatitis, gallstones, ethanol, alcohol, uh, trauma, triglycerides, uh, surgery, malignancy, autoimmune, a scorpion sting, which I didn't even know that, but a scorpion sting can, hypercalcemia, ERCP, which is a um, endoscopic retrograde colio, colang, oh, I can say it, col, colangio pancreato, pancreatography. Ah, I did it. <laughs> That's what ERCP stands for. And drugs can also cause this. So those are all the causes of, uh, potential causes of acute pancreatitis. So that's, that's when you really want to kind of understand like what's happening. Like, should I be looking for this information? What am I looking for? Um, is there anything else? Right. And you're trying to understand what's happening in this documentation. Now there's going to be different reasons and different causes as to why. Um, but that was something that I thought was really interesting. And I'm going to share that link that I got that from. Um, but that was really awesome. I like that one. <laughs> And let me see if I have one more. Oh, okay. So I do have one more. So the endocrine glands, the major glands of the endocrine system, and this is not talking about the ovaries or the testes because obviously women have ovaries, males have testes. But uh, the endocrine, endocrine glands, the major glands of the endocrine system are not including the ovaries and testes. Okay, take those off the table, but everything else. So you have tap. So it's going to be two T's, three A's, and four P's. These are all the, um, the major glands, right? So it's going to go the thymus, the thyroid, the anterior pituitary, the adrenal cortex, the adrenal medulla, the posterior pituitary, the parathyroid gland, the pancreas, and the pi uh, pineal. So you see uh, T, T, A, 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 right? And then <laughs> the four P's, okay? So the thymus, the thyroid, the anterior pituitary, the adrenal cortex, the adrenal medulla, the posterior pituitary, the parathyroid gland, the pancreas, and the pineal. Tap, right? It's tap. So two T's, three A's, four P's. Those are all the major glands of the endocrine system. So you, you hear anything about the pineal, you know that is part of the endocrine system. You hear anything about the thyroid, again, the endocrine system. The thymus, endocrine system. It makes it so much easier. Do things that are going to help you to understand this in little bite-sized chunks, in little ways so that it makes sense to you. Everybody learns differently. The goal is to keep learning and figure out ways that's going to be more efficient for you to learn. Now, uh, one other thing that I will say about like how, um, how do you stay motivated? Like how do, you, how do you get to where you study every day? You have to set yourself up on a schedule. I talk about schedules all the time. It's a way of giving yourself discipline and making sure that you're staying the course. Set a plan, set goals for yourself, get a calendar so you can put it in front of you and you can see it. Get a whiteboard and list out your attainable goals. You have your short-term goals, you have your long-term goals, but set the, the short-term goals. I will study for five hours this week. You actually should be studying 10, but we can take what we can get, right? <laughs> and set that time aside for yourself in order to do it. 
because a lot of people start to lose steam. They get excited about it at first and then they start to lose steam when it starts to get a little boring and dull. Uh, there's going to be times when you're studying that it is boring and dull and it'll be hard for you. Uh, but you got to stick with it and you have to try to do things like come up with these mnemonic devices or watch medical coding with blue as she talks about her favorite mnemonic devices and, you know, use those to your benefit. It's only going to help you when you start to think about this. Oh, and you, you'll start to think about the other uh, mnemonic devices that I came up with. Remember a wet bed? <laughs> That's another good way to remember what the kidneys do. Remember? So, <laughs> but that is uh, the show for tonight. Uh, but if you are interested in um, having more little puzzles and things like that, I do that on my Patreon channel. I will leave the link in uh, the description box below for my Patreon channel. Patreon, if you don't know, is a lot like YouTube. Uh, I, in there, um, the, the viewers are generally supporting <laughs> the creator, which would be me. And I have pledge levels that start out at just $1 per month. And the higher the pledge levels, um, some higher levels do include one-on-one -on -one tutoring time with me and it is included as part of the package and the tutoring or professional coaching is done over Zoom. So if that is uh, something that is of interest to you, uh, I hope that you will check it out. I do uh, crossword puzzles and I do word searches to help with medical terminology and also um, anatomy. And it also helps with uh, prefixes, suffixes, and your root words, okay? <laughs> I've done the prefixes and suffixes uh, word search already. I haven't done root words yet, but I will get around to it. Um, and I do all kinds of other things. I do matchups and other worksheets for medical coding. So, and, you know, if you're interested in that, check it out. So, I'm going to wrap this one up. I hope you guys have a great weekend, and I will see y'all on the next video. So if you are a medical coder, a medical coding student, somebody curious about the fascinating world of medical coding, a provider, or a nurse, I invite you to like and subscribe and follow me on my journey in medical coding. I will see y'all next time. Bye.